pregnancy. So the mother's diet, um, antibiotic use and, and genetics, infections, uh, stress, these are all factors that can facilitate and shape the composition of the microbiome. Welcome to True Health. Thank you for tuning in. Today's topic is the effects of stress and diet on gut health. This will be a multiple part series. And today we're going to talk about the microbiome. 90% 90% of all cells in the body are technically non-human. 100 trillion microorganisms exist in the body. So when we think of a microbiome, it's a collection of microbial cells, including bacteria, viruses, protozoa, fungi, and archaea that perform a vast array of metabolic and protective functions. Every bodily surface includes microorganisms. Uh, today's presentation, I'm going to focus primarily on the bacteria of the microbiome and the gut microbiome, gut bacteria. So the skin contains over 1 trillion resident bacteria. The oral cavity has 1,011 bacterial cells that flow from the oral cavity to the stomach per day. There's over 700 different species of bacteria in the mouth. And in the gut, and particularly the distal ileum in the colon, there's anywhere between 300 to 1,000 different species of bacteria in the gut. So there's something really important to understand. There's this complex interaction between the, the gut bacteria and the host, the human. A very fundamental concept I want you all to keep in mind is that the microbiome, we can think of it, the gut microbiome as a, a vital organ. Um, the bacteria play a very important role in a lot of different biochemical mechanisms, pathways in a body, um, energy metabolism, the breakdown of our nutrients, polysaccharides or the fermentable dietary fibers that help to produce the short chain fatty acids and amino acid production. The bacteria play a role in um, modulation of the immune function and maturation of our immune system. There are other systems that play a very important, that are that require the gut microbiome, and that's the gastrointestinal system and the central nervous system. In order for these three systems, the immune system, the gastrointestinal system, and the nervous system to develop, we require a diverse, very, very diverse eubiotic microbiotic flora. Okay, it's really, really important that we have an intact uh, microbiome in order for these systems to mature. The gut micro, microbes can play a role in the production of neural peptides. 95% um, of serotonin is produced in the gut and uh, this is facilitated by gut bacteria. But it's important to note that serotonin it does not cross the blood brain barrier, but it um, does influence the the nervous system via the vagus nerve. There are several mechanisms by which the neurotransmitters can indirectly and directly influence the nervous system um, when they're produced in the gut. 50% of dopamine um, is produced in the gut, and we also see that the gut bacteria facilitate the production of GABA and glutamate. So there is um, this gut-brain um, connection. The bacteria facilitate estrogen metabolism. There's a collection of bacteria called the estrobolome that helps with uh, making sure that uh, estrogen is eliminated, broken down and eliminated from the body. The, it's, uh, something else that's important to note is that um, the vitamins, um, we are a nutrient depleted nation. And um, it's important to note that the bacteria of the gut facilitates our uh, vitamin stores. So they, they um, pr promote the production of important uh, vitamins such as B12, biotin, and vitamin K. Um, there's a metabolic factory that's happening inside the distal ileum, the colon. Gut bacteria play a role in biotransformation and toxin metabolism, um, sequestering chemicals and limiting toxin absorption, supporting gut lining. 
the bacteria is able to help with the elimination of toxins from our body. So if we take care of them, they'll help take care of us and anything that we're exposed to. So more than 50% of xenobiotic hormone and toxin detoxification is facilitated by beneficial gut bacteria. There's an interesting emerging field of research called the Oncobiome, um, an emerging area of investigation into the role specific microbes play in carcinogenesis. In 2013, there was a study that was published in the Journal of National Cancer, the National Cancer Institute. And they found that colorectal cancer patients had a particular uh, elevated amount of fusobacteria, a more pro-inflammatory type of bacteria that uh, is implicated in the progression and development of colorectal cancer. There was another study that saw that there was a difference in the gut, uh, the actual microbiome of breast tissue in breast cancer compared to women who did not have breast cancer, a significant difference. So we do understand that uh, now bacteria plays a role in regulation of tumor cell proliferation and influence in cell uh, apoptosis or cell death and uh, modulating inflammation and genomic stability, regulating genomic stability, all which play a very important role in the development of cancer. Something else that's important to note is that the gut bacteria can influence the type of bacteria that you have in your gut can influence the efficacy of cancer treatment. Um, so if you are undergoing chemo or radiation, there have been uh, studies that looked at cisplatin and um, the uh, and tumor sensitivity to the actual therapies can actually be enhanced by having a healthy microbiome. So the development of the immune system starts early in life. Uh, the gut bacteria facilitates its development. Uh, it helps with immunosurveillance and cytokine regulation and helping to maintain proper activity of our white blood cells and uh, maintaining an intact intestinal barrier. And there's a, a crosstalk. We have 80% um, of our immune system is inside the uh, gastrointestinal tract. And this tissue, uh, uh, very, very um, dense uh, immune tissue, communicates with the gut microbiome. Um, so there's just microbial crosstalk between the resident immune cells of the gastrointestinal tract with the gut bacteria. And so this development of the gut microbiome starts early in life. Um, there are several factors that influence, in the, influence the development of the gut microbiome. It starts from pregnancy, so uh, the, the mother's diet, um, antibiotic use, and, and genetics, infections, uh, stress. These are all factors that can facilitate and shape the uh, composition of the microbiome of the mommy. And in, in the mother, um, these, these changes that happen, um, that can happen um, in a microbiome can be passed down um, to the child. So um, the mode of delivery, uh, the mother uh, chooses, whether C-section or um, vaginal, these, uh, these different components, mode of de delivery can uh, play a role in uh, the type of uh, microbiome that's developed in the baby. And of course, later on in life, um, and as you you see here from this this um, this diagram, the baby's microbiome is being shaped, and it starts way back in during the time of the mother's pregnancy, delivery, and um, post delivery, and so the baby's microbiome starts well back from the time the mother's pregnant and is further influenced as that child gets older from the feed-in patterns or um, the types of foods that the baby's fed and um, et, et cetera. Now, and it was interesting that uh, many years ago, um, it, the, the whole idea of the, uh, the amniotic fluid and placenta, that environment being sterile, 
we now know that the placenta has its own microbiome and there's been studies that looked at amniotic fluid and amniotic fluid tends to have a vast array of different types of bacteria. So the baby is swallowing amniotic fluid and it enters the meconium. So it there's we now know that the baby is having exposure to the mother's um, microbiome in utero. And uh, this uh, facilitates the baby's uh, microbiome later in life. So C-sections are often, um, can be a, a choice of delivery for mothers um, and uh, are sometimes medically necessary. And, uh, but researchers have found that 80% of C-section born babies had hospital acquired bacteria in their guts when they were born compared with 50% of vaginally born babies. The guts of C-section babies were dominated by opportunistic bacteria such as Enterococcus and Klebsiella, which circulate in hospitals, interestingly. So one remedy for this uh, to help reestablish the gut microbiome in um, C-section babies was to uh, look into vaginal seeding. There was a pilot study that looked at um, vaginal swabbing of the mother uh, prior to surgery and inoculating the babies uh, within two minutes of birth with the mother's <clears throat> um, vaginal flora. And they were able to reestablish uh, a healthy uh, microbiome um, in these babies uh, compared to babies who were not swabbed. Compared with vaginal delivery, C-section delivery is associated with increased risk of immune disorders later in life, such as asthma and allergies, type 1 diabetes, celiac disease and inflammatory bowel diseases, obesity, immune deficiencies, leukemia, and other malignancies affecting young people. And I would say, you know, from my, just my clinical experience working with kids who have um, any form of um, atopic disease, um, there's, if they have severe eczema, uh, one of the important indicators of, of eczema is the mode of delivery. And I often see this all the time, kiddos who have really bad eczema, or even adults with severe eczema, some have um, underwent a C-section. Of course, the mother went underwent a C-section, and that could have um, played a role in the development of their gut microbiome. Breast milk is another way that the immune system is developed, and it's the gold standard. Nutrition for infants, um, milk, breast milk contains very important beneficial bacteria, bifidobacterium, lactobacillus, bacteriorotes, and immunoglobulins, um, antibodies. These, this is part of the immune system, um, human milk oligosaccharides. Uh, these are very, very potent um, um, constituents that have antipathogenic um, properties modulating the intestinal bacteria. And this is one of the reasons why breastfeeding is in, extremely important uh, when um, baby is born. The formula feeding has been shown to alter infant gut microbiome, the infant gut microbiome in favor of pro-inflammatory taxa and increased gut permeability and bacterial load. So it's important again, to uh, as equally important to have a vaginal delivery, we want to also promote breastfeeding because breastfeeding, God made breastfeeding um, necessary. Uh, milk, the breast of the mother is so important in being able to establish the baby's uh, gut in order to build the immune system. And this is, um, this is, your gut microbiome um, is shaped early in life and it can influence your health um, later in life. We talked about in previous presentations, the role of the, this, this bi-directional communication between the gut and the brain and how the brain can influence motility, secretion, nutrient delivery, microbial balance, and in, in 
and how in turn the gastrointestinal system can influence neural peptide production and our neurotransmitter uh, synthesis and influence stress and anxiety or mental health and mood and behavior. And so what we're gonna talk about on our next presentation, this was an introduction to the gut microbiome. We are going to talk about how the gut bacteria in particular, bad bacteria, how it influences our, our neuropeptides and the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis and our cortisol and intestinal lining and influence and intestinal um, permeability and or influence in um, intestinal permeability and inflammation and chronic disease and how stress, which this, this uh, presentation is eventually, we're gonna cover this topic and how our stress, our stress levels, how can it alter the gut microbiota and promote disease? So stay tuned. Thank you so much for just joining. Stay tuned and thank you so much for um, tuning in for today's True Health Tuesday and look out for our next um, presentation on how 